Okay, so we're now going to go through uh, June 2010 for Wings Polymers Analysis. Right, Rachel is the way to start. Okay, so benzene, uh, evidence that led us to doubt uh, Keckley's model. So, key things to include for this is that um, the actual bond length in benzene, as you know, is actually in between that of a carbon-carbon single bond and a carbon-carbon double bond. So um, Keckley's model would have um, like single bonds, then a short double bond, then a long single bond, then a short double bond, then a long single bond, then a short double bond, be some sort of crazy structure like that. Um, as you know, the benzene you've drawn enough uh, is actually a planar hexagon like so. So actual bond length is different. Um, for, it's intermediate between a carbon carbon double, carbon carbon single bond length. Um, delta H hydrogenation. Uh, but benzene is less exothermic than three times cyclohexene plus H2 to go to cyclohexane. Um, you'd expect it uh, to be about the same, but it's less exothermic when compared to that. Um, and then the final one is, you know, benzene only reacts with bromine with a catalyst, with a halogen carrier. Um, however, you'd expect it, if it's got three double bonds, uh, you'd expect it to just react with bromine uh, without a catalyst. So three things, bond length, hydrogenation, and reaction with bromine. Okay, uh, so we're now looking at uh, obviously making an azo dye here, and we've got a nice synthesis flow chart. Um, can we work out where we're going to go? Well, let's have a look at our final product that we've got to get to. So, obviously, uh, we're starting off with one three dimethyl benzene. The first one is nitration, but you've got to get your nitrogen in the right place. So, I've got uh, your methyl. Uh, with a carbon in the middle there. So the nitrogen has to go on that one there. So if I draw it out like so, your nitrogen, your NO2 group has got to go there for it to be in the correct position here. Tin in concentrated HCl, you know, turns that nitrogen into an um, amine group. This is going to turn that uh, amine group into a diazonium iron, like so, Cl minus because it's HCl. Um, and what I've got to do, I've got to add a phenol to that. This bit is coming from this boy here. So your phenol. Just copy it out, has got to look like that, and then that nitrogen there is going to pop on like so. Okay, uh, next one is we've got compound A being formed by reaction of 1,3-dimethyl benzene with uh, nitric acid sulfuric acid. Uh, uh, sulfuric acid. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, how does this work? Okay, so uh, let's start like so. Um, it tells me, it wants me to do how sulfuric acid is catalyzed. So I'll probably skip ahead a little bit there. So the first one is sulfuric acid plus nitric acid gives me my electrophile plus hydrogen sulfate ion plus water. Then NO2 plus comes in. Electrons come out of the ring to bond to that nitrogen like so. NO2 H. Remember the delocalized ring of electrons must break at that bond. That carbon hydrogen bond breaks to give me my product. Plus H plus 
And then the final step is eight plus reacts with your hydrogen sulfate that you made up here to give you your sulfuric acid catalyst back. Okie dokie. Uh, next one is how many other structural isomers of A could have been formed from the mono nitration? Okay, well, uh, that's the one we made. Um, we could put them here. So, we could have had them between the two methyl groups, or alternatively, we could have popped in there as well. If I go there, that is actually the same as that one, so it's actually two. Right, so polymer time. Uh, students discover first polyester terylene, blah, 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 blah. Benzene one four dicarboxylic acid with ethane di. Do you want to display form for the repeat unit? Okay, so uh, display form for the repeat unit. I'm starting with benzene one four dicarboxylic acid. Rather than that O, I'm going to form the O for ethane diol. That O would go off and it would join up to that one there. Right, this is quite interesting. Um, first stage notes pre-polymerization forms out. Well, what could happen is you start off with your benzene di carboxylic acid and on each end you add The alcohol like so. So you end up with uh, that guy there. Uh, this one quite a quick one. If you can up all your carbons it comes to C14 H10O4 so your empirical formula is C7H5O2. But I'll draw the two monomers that could be used to make it. So uh, Hopefully, you can see it's, they probably told me someone, it's a di, it's actually a polyester. So that's my benzene. It's going to start from a dicarboxylic acid, like so. Just making sure you've got the right stereochemistry. And then you've got your diol here. For that one. Uh, right, okay, um, I'm now um, PGA, polyglycolic glycolic acid uh, being developed, blah, 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 uh, complete hydrolysis. So again, ooh, they are my esters. So skeletal, I'm going to put an H there, and that's going to become an OH there. Bang, bang, like so. But up one is in sodium hydroxide solution, so it's going to be that one there. Why are they better for the environment? Well, because they're biodegradable, um, so they break down in the environment. Hydrocarbon based polymers obviously don't break down in the environment, um, we're stuck with them for a very long time. Uh, right, okay, uh, next one, I've got an aldehyde, a ketone, and a carboxylic acid. Carried out the same two chemical tests on each one and could distinguish between all three. Which ones did she use? Well, the first one she could have done is if she used 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine, she would have had an orange precipitate with the ketone and the aldehyde. So she would have known which two, well, she would have therefore been able to deduce that the one that didn't give an orange precipitate would have been the carboxylic acid. Then she could have reacted the ketone and the aldehyde with Tollens reagent, and she would have had a silver mirror, hopefully, with the aldehyde 
more likely a black gunk, but never mind. Um, and then no reaction with the ketone. So you should be able to work it out like that way. Um, how could we use infrared spectroscopy to confirm which one is carboxylic acid? Uh, you would see a very, very broad peak uh, between 2,500 and 3,300 wave numbers uh, for the OH group. Uh, Aldehyde has that molecular formula. I've got a doubler with a relative peak area 6 with the aldehyde proton. How can um, I get that structure? So, I've got five carbons. I've got an aldehyde group on the end. And it contains a doubler. It contains a doubler at 0 0.9. And I have got with a relative peak area of 6. If it's coming in at 0.9, it can't be these hydrogens there. They would be uh, shifted to um, a higher chemical shift if you look on your data sheet. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That gives me my five carbons. Um, looks like my hydrogen add up okay. So can I explain that? So obviously that's my aldehyde hydrogen there, and then this peak for at 0.9 would be a double. It'd have a peak area of six because I've got six hydrogen, and it would be split into a doublet because it's got one neighbouring hydrogen. Right. So now we're going on to the ketones. Three structural isomers are shown below. Uh, what's the third one? Um, the third one, hopefully you can see, that's on carbon two. So if I put it on the middle carbon, uh, CH2, CH3, CH2, CH3, that would be um, my uh, third one. Carbon and my shown below, which one is it going to be? So, first of all, the carbon responsible for the peak at 210 is going to be the keto carbon, if you check out your data sheets, how many peaks am I going to have? Well, this one's going to have one, two, three, four, five peaks. This one, those two are the same. One, two, three, four peaks. This one, one, two, three peaks, because those two are the same and the two end ones are the same. How many have I got? I've got four, uh, so therefore it is. Number two.